Yes, looks great. Perfect. So yeah, I'll get started right away. So yeah, as uh, you mentioned, uh, thanks for having me. My name is Chris. Uh, I'm going to present a, a zero to hero Vim plus metal setup. Um, just to give a, like, a little bit of background about myself and who I am. Uh, I actually grew up in Wisconsin on a dairy farm. Uh, th then I uh, studied international relations. Uh, then I, after grad school, switched to uh, developments. And now I'm based in the Netherlands and I work as a software engineer at Lunatech Labs. We do a lot of scholar developments and other JVM based things as well. Uh, and in my free time, I really enjoy working on tooling and uh, I like minimal tech as well. Uh, I'm one of the maintainers of Metals, the Scala language server. If I was in a room with everybody, I would love to see like how many people uh, actually uh, use it or not. But, uh, and I also wrote the, the specific Vim clients that I'll talk to you guys about today. So my goals, first of all, my goal is not to uh, have everybody switch to, to Vim <laughs> and to use Metals. If you have a development environment that you're happy with, that's totally awesome. Like That makes me really happy. Uh, but one of my big goals is to show that Vim is not only just a viable editor for Scala, but it's really well supported and actually feature rich, both because of some of the clients we have and also uh, Metals as well. And then also, I want to show how fast it is to get up and running with Metals and Vim. Uh, I think some people kind of get turned off a little bit by just hearing Vim and Metals and uh, like think it will take a bunch of work to get set up, but that's just totally not true. You can get set up really quickly. Uh, then I want to show if there is time, because I, I don't have a ton of time, uh, how much, uh, how Metals it kind of accounts for different language clients and what they do to, uh, yeah, just again, account for different clients. So uh, first of all, the thing that, to understand I, and the, like why I'm even talking about this is I think it's important to realize that Vim isn't going anywhere. Like uh, if you go all the way back to 1991 when it was created to the last few years, uh, it's remains a really, really popular editor uh, for however much weight you give the stack developer survey. If you look at 2017, uh, it was in the top five editors, same with 2018 and even this past year. Uh, it's in the top five editors. And one of the cool things to, I think, realize about editors like Vim or Emacs is that uh, a lot of like the, the new kids in the block, like Visual Studio Code, which is, a, is an amazing editor that tons of people have switched to, uh, they, I, I'm, I'm really curious if some of these new editors will have the same type of longevity that Vim and editors like Emacs have because they've been around for such a long time and have remained such a strong force in the editing world. Uh, so I think it's important to realize that Vim's, Vim's not going anywhere. Uh, another thing uh, is if you look at the Scala developer survey in 2018, uh, you don't see uh, Vim mentioned anywhere. Uh, you do see the like small 5% yellow, which is uh, enzyme usage, which uh, was, I would probably say, way more Emacs than, than Vim. Uh, but you don't see really any real alternatives or like large percentage alternatives in this, in this example, except for IntelliJ. And then this last year, we saw a huge shift, uh, not necessarily a huge shift, I guess. It depends on what your definition of huge shift is. Uh, but there's a, a significant portion, like around 30%-ish of people that are using metals in VS Code itself, which I think is, is really awesome. But then we also have this other chunk of people, uh, which I think is a little bit unfortunate how it was worded in the survey. But one says metals plus another text editor, which for myself, like I answered yes to that because I use Vim and metals. Uh, but then there's also this text editor, Vim Emacs one. So I, I think some of the people were maybe a little bit confused uh, what, how to answer that question, especially if they, were, if they are using Vim with metals and if they didn't answer metals plus another text editor. So uh, I think this goes to show, though, that there is a, at least a chunk of developers in the Scala world that uh, don't uh, either use IntelliJ or use the most cop popular combination with metals, which is metals and VS Code. So for that to say, also Metals isn't going anywhere, I don't think. Uh, I, I would say the group of people uh, behind Metals uh, is, is really is strong. I know Virtus Labs in, in Poland puts a lot of effort into kind of leading the charge and developing uh, Metals uh, in a partnership with the Scala Center. Uh, even for myself uh, with Lunatech Labs, we also sponsor the Scala Center. And, and part of that is giving developer time to Metals. Like I, I work a couple days a week on Metals and one of the clients as well. 
so I, I don't I don't foresee metals disappearing and, and going anywhere in the future because there are multiple companies that are behind it plus the Scala Center. So I, I think that's that's really really good uh, in the world of tooling to have some diversity and to be able to offer uh, a language server for whatever client somebody may be using. So on to kind of the meat of the talk. Um, I think when people hear, again, Vim and Metals, they get a little like, oh, like, that's, how, how do I set this up? How do I go about it? And I, I think part of the reason for that is that uh, in a lot of the other clients, like VS Code and stuff, you have the LSP clients. And, and sorry, if I, let me step back one second to LSP stands for Language Server Protocol. So if people aren't familiar with that, it's the basically the protocol that Metals and other language servers follow to be able to provide everything from diagnostics to code completions and to other things to whichever client it is using that uses it that speaks LSP. And in a lot of cases like VS Code, for example, LSP is sort of baked into the editor. Uh, but for example, with Vim, it's not the case. So you actually have to have another uh, um, extension to implement the LSP uh, protocol. And that's where it becomes a little bit difficult because as you see on this screen, we have like four or five different options of clients that implement LSP. Um, I will, I'm going to be doing a longer talk on this uh, later on in the year at Scala Days, actually, that we go like really in depth into uh, development in Vim for Scala. Uh, but the really short of it is uh, the top one is one that I recommend for somebody who wants like a big, like an in-depth experience with Vim, more similar to VS Code, I would say, where you have uh, just a lot of extra features. Uh, and then uh, a more minimal one that I think is really great is Vim LSP, which is about halfway down on the screen, uh, which is written fully in Vim script. Uh, and then probably the most exciting one, in my opinion, is the bottom one, which is the LSP client, which is actually uh, built into the Neo, into NeoVim, uh, which is a kind of a whole topic on its own. So coc.metals is the official uh, extension for coc.neovim, which again is the one of the options for the, the LSP clients in Vim. It's also the one that we recommend uh, to use and, and metals. It's, if you read the metals documentation, it's uh, listed there as the recommended one. I also wrote it, so I'm really, I like love the feedback about it and people using it uh, because I think it also uh, uh, gives you the like most rich experience. And COC uh, stands for Conqueror of Completion, by the way. Uh, it's actually a really crazy library because basically like one person in the beginning just took VS Code internals and ported it over to Vim. And so you can actually, that goes into kind of a segue. The reason why we chose coc.neovim to make the Metals extension for Vim is because we can share the internals of our VS Code extension uh, with the internals of our COC extension. So we literally just swap out the APIs and it works really well. Uh, so I, I don't wanna touch a lot on like uh, some of the basics that you might expect to work like things, um, like uh, code completion or uh, find references or go to definition, but I wanna do a quick overview of some of the things that may you may not expect Vim to be able to do or this extension to do, um, but I think it is pretty neat how it works out. So first of all, one of the things we really wanted to do is like I said, make the installation really simple. So all you literally need to do is add uh, the plugin and the coc.neovim plugin. If you're familiar with like Vim plug and stuff, you could use that. Then you paste recommended mappings into your VimRC. Uh, if you look under 2.1, there's an example there of like uh, what you would put in and that's how you would trigger a rename when you're inside of Vim. Uh, then the third one is how you actually install the extension. And after you install the extension, uh, it automatically will use Coursier to download Metals itself and keep it up to date and stuff like that. Uh, as soon as you open a build, just like you would in VS Code or a different editor, uh, the moment that it detects that you're in either a mill space or SBT space, it, it prompts you to import your build, which then uh, just gives you, dumps your full build definition in order for us to pass it to Bloop. Uh, code actions, there's only two code actions uh, in, in Metals right now. One is the one you're seeing on the screen where something's not in scope and you could trigger a code action to bring it in scope. And the other one is implementing uh, abstract members that are, are missing in a concrete class. Oops, wrong way. Uh, another thing uh, that Meadows does is it offers tree view protocol. If you use IntelliJ, you're probably familiar with this, but it allows you to basically be in a trait or a class or object 
and automatically pop into a tree view of where that thing is located. And then you can also uh, look at other members of that trade or something and jump back into the code where that where it's located. It's a really great way to uh, explore an API and to navigate around the code. Uh, uh, somebody actually sent in a pull request and just like implemented this entire thing in the extension. So it was incredible how much work they put into it and it, and it works really, really well. Worksheets is another one uh, that has like become one of my favorites. Uh, it uh, basically will allow you to run evaluations similar to a REPL right into right in your editor. Uh, and this is using NeoVim here. One like small uh, thing to remember is in some of the editors that don't um, support virtual text, which is like the thing on the right hand side of the screen you're seeing uh, where you like it's on ed uneditable text. Uh, uh, we use comments. We just kind of embed comments at the end of the line. So this is using NeoVim where they do have virtual text and it is uh, embedding them as virtual text. And then uh, you can do a hover on it and see the full outputs. Uh, I'm going to try to hurry up really quick because I'm already out of time. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of configuration options. You can do everything from setting your job at home to setting a custom mill script to uh, a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, everything that you could do, for example, in VS Code that you're familiar with with Metals, you can do in Vim as well. Uh, you also have access to a ton of commands, such as like uh, just create a new Scala file really quickly, uh, which will allow you to create like a new class with the name that you give it, and it will auto put the package in it uh, and kind of do all the niceties that you would expect that to happen. Uh, you have an embedded doctor, and what doctor does is it basically just does a really quick check on your code base to make sure everything is working as expected. As you can see here, this is uh, metals inside of the, the metals code base, actually, to make sure that everything is, is working as expected. And if you're into this, like a really big thing that we're working on uh, is integration with Vimspector, which is actually a debugger. So this will allow you, as you're seeing in the screen, to set a breakpoint and to run or debug your code right inside Vim, and you'll be able to see like the full stack, uh, the variables at each point, and then you also on the bottom right be able to see what it's evaluating to. And it's, it's not merged in yet, uh, but I would expect in the next couple of weeks that that will be merged in and released. And finally, the future, what do we have in holds? What does it like hold for Vim and Metals? Uh, for, it's really important for me anyways, at least as like the author of COC Metals, that I really want to try to continue to have parity with VS Code and Metals. I think VS Code and Metals gives the user such a good experience and everything that that offers the user, I really want to try to offer that in Vim as well. Um, one huge thing to look out for, which I think is really incredible, is that the new version of NeoVim has LSP baked into it, and that is like the best way to go about it, in my opinion. Uh, on OniVim.2, I'm just going to skip it and just say, if you're into NeoVim and Vim, look, at, look into it. It's really exciting. Uh, and then also, I, one thing I really want to work on is, is updated Scala syntax for Vim. There's a, one library that everybody uses, uh, and it hasn't been updated in quite some time. Uh, so that's one thing that I really want to work on is providing a minimal alternative to the one that exists because the one that exists uh, also has a lot of things that we don't necessarily need anymore in Vim uh, because of the tooling that exists that works well with Vim, such as Metals. Uh, so that's something I hope to work on in the future. Uh, and finally, thank you. That's <laughs> that's it. Sorry, I felt like I had to like really rush through it, but I only had 10 minutes and I wanted to like condense everything into there and give a, a really good overview of how quickly it is to get up and running with Vim uh, to see and to show like how much uh, the COC Meadows extension actually has. Uh, we're always uh, open to like answering questions about people that have uh, any questions about Vim or a specific extension. Uh, this is my Twitter handle. Uh, a link to my slides and a, a link to the extension uh, that I referenced. So uh, I think I'm out of time, but I don't know if anybody has any questions or if I'm allowed to, to ask any questions or anything because yeah, I'm out of time.